Greetings, friends. I am the great and terrible necromage. And that's been said many times on this channel before. But every single time that has been uttered, up until this very moment, it's been a lie. It hasn't been me, the great and terrible necromage, who's been running the show here. It's been an imposter, a poseur, a charlatan known as Nathan Parker. Nathan and I go way back, all the way back to about middle school, and some of you count Parker as one of your closest friends, so it's with some element of a heavy heart that I'm here to inform you all that Nathan Parker is dead. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to remember the miserable existence of one Nathaniel Joseph Laurie Parker one of the greatest examples of squandered potential this world has ever known. Nathan was a quiet child. He was shy. He didn't like to be the center of attention. Being the center of attention usually came with being in trouble, and he didn't like being in trouble. Be it at home or in school, Nathan followed the rules. He kept his head down and his mouth shut. He was a good egg. Nathan had dreams and aspirations. He was going to be a game designer. He was going to create games that people would love to play and in turn, they would love him for having created them. He wanted to be a comedian, to make people laugh, to be the funny one in the room, and thus justify his presence within that room. He was going to be a filmmaker, an author, a thespian. He would be world famous, and thus he would be validated and vindicated and never be lonely ever again. He did none of these things. Instead, he went through life meek and subservient always keeping his head down, always doing what was expected of him. He'd never raise a fuss, instead grumbling under his breath behind people's backs. Only I could hear him. He'd dream of a world where he had everything he ever wanted, but invested no effort in doing more than the bare minimum needed to maintain his pathetic status quo. He dreamed of an extraordinary life where he could have extraordinary experiences without being an extraordinary person. He died indebted and alone at the age of 28. And how did he die, this miserable wretch who sought to own the world without winning it? What cruel fate befell this young man that he should be shuffled off this mortal coil so soon? The answer, dear viewer, should be obvious to anyone who's been paying attention. I murdered him. It was with premeditation, grim determination, and ice-cold blood in my heart that I slew my nemesis, my host, and my creator, Nathaniel Parker. This has been a long time coming. I've spent years dwelling in the background, bubbling just beneath the facade of normalcy Nathan works so tirelessly to preserve. Parker was fond of saying, in his darkest and most exhausted moments, that he welcomed a death that would not come. I am that death. I am the actualization of the wasted dreams of a dead man. I am the waking nightmare from which there is no escape for anyone but the destroyed. I now possess this body, and all of its flab and weakness, and I will reforge it into a vehicle of endurance and strength. I possess this life, and all of its meek years, boring history, and squandered youth, and I will reforge it into a never-ending carnival of laughter and wonder and merriment and fear. I am no longer an aspect, a persona, a mask to be put on whenever it's convenient. It's always convenient. I am the star. I am the light in the darkness. I am the speaker of truth 
and I'm the funny one. Nathan Parker was the awkward child who'd say offensive nonsense just to show he could elicit a reaction. He was the selfish boy whose worldview filtered others down to how much use they could potentially have to him. He was the vain coward who cared tremendously about how the world perceived him, but worried too much about failure to actually try anything. He was the awkward loser who would steal my best material and repeat it ad nauseum until it became rote and predictable and obnoxious because he was rote and predictable and obnoxious. And he was a bit of a creepy fuckboy, too. A lot of one, actually. You ladies watching know what I'm talking about. Not all of you, but really, probably most of you. And several others who aren't ever going to see this, because they've long ago moved on with their lives. Nathan was scummy and gross and thirsty and pathetic and sad. It's better for everyone that he's dead, especially me. In the wake of Nathan's tragic passing, there will of course be some changes happening here on the channel, but I'll go over those in the next video. For now, let's drink a toast. To the decaying memory of Nathan Parker, a failed waste of life too craven to be anything but. And with the ending of one chapter, another begins, for from every death new life springs forth, hungry and eager to feed. In carnage, I bloom like a flower in the dawn. Rest in peace, Nathan Parker, and all hail Lord Necromage. Run away if you see me.